Happy Monday! Welcome back. This is Mary and today I'm really excited to talk to you guys about the Met Levels because I have received a lot of requests on this one and um, as I do with many of my other videos, I'm going to try my best to break it down using common themes and stories and narratives so that you don't have to memorize everything because Met Levels is not easy to memorize. There are a lot of activities um, and examples that can be used at each stage to indicate the appropriate and safe levels and if you try to memorize everything without conceptualizing or understanding what MET levels are broadly and how it fits into cardiac rehabilitation in each stages it'll be really difficult for you to learn it and apply it for intervention so today I have something special for you guys I have this whiteboard I've gotten a lot of feedback you guys really like the visual so I um, am gonna work walk through you, uh, each stage broadly and after that we'll come back to go through each stages more specifically in detail okay so let's first talk about what met levels are met level very simply put is the amount of energy it costs to complete a task as indicated by the amount of oxygen that it requires. So the oxygen cost of me laying on my bed in the morning when I wake up very quietly without talking is one mesal beta metabolic equivalent. Now 2.5 met levels is what I would need to get dressed in the morning. Okay, so it's the oxygen consumption required to complete a task. That's the met level. Okay, now first phase here is acute. Cardiac rehab begins during in-hospital recovery following a surgery or a cardiac event. And at this phase of rehab, uh, the patient is medically stable, but the priority is still on close monitoring um, of the patient, the electrocardiogram, blood pressure, and pulse, and I mean intense, okay? Vital signs are taken prior to each activity at the peak, immediately after stopping and four to five minutes after activity. That's four times, you guys, okay? So a lot of a monitoring here at phase one. So what might you assume about a patient at this uh, phase? Probably tired and weak, which is why if you look here, you'll see that I have a bed and wheelchair because the evaluation and intervention will begin at the bedside with activities at med level one to two. So we're looking at very light activities in the room like bed and wheelchair mobility, transfers from bed to chair, and bath and grooming and feeding while sitting. Okay. From there, they'll work up to met levels two to three, which may include seated shower, stressing, and even washing the dishes. But it's important to make sure that the patient is not in pain, has an irregular pulse or arrhythmia before starting any activity at phase one. Okay, now let's move down here. And if you'll look down here, you'll see some important priorities at this level. So one, family and patient education. We want to be teaching energy conservation and work simplification, as well as cardiac and post-surgical precautions. And uh, important to provide knowledge of the approximate metabolic cost of activities and guidelines for appropriate activity levels, as well as symptoms for activity intolerance. And to remember, uh, at phase one, we are looking at ways to improve the ability to perform self-care, ADLs, and not much else here. Now, when patients are able to perform activities at med level 3.5, they are discharged to phase two. And this is outpatient rehab. So let's talk about phase two. Uh, this is where you get discharged to outpatient after it has been determined that uh, the clinical status and capacity will allow for safe participation in an individualized progressive exercise program here. Okay, so it begins after you leave the hospital and it's often done in an outpatient setting, meaning you'll travel back and forth from your home to a rehab center for this portion of the recovery. And that's why I have a drawing here of a house. 
Um, and at phase two of cardiac rehab, activities would begin at four to five met level because remember, by the time you are discharged from phase one, you are already completing activities at met level 3.5. So we would be uh, beginning with activities at four to five range and you progress to higher met levels as you move on, okay? Now to remember this phase, uh, think of what you might want most when you've been away from home, whether that's camping, traveling, or being at the hospital. Uh, you might look forward to coming home to a warm shower, a real toilet instead of a bedpan or commode, right? So by the time you're ready to be discharged to outpatient rehab and come home after phase one, you can uh, take a standing shower, have a bowel movement in the privacy of your own bathroom on the toilet. You can even climb up to the stairs uh, on the second floor of your house for some sexy time and pretty much get back to your normal routine like making the bed, mopping, gardening, riding a bike. So essentially by the time you get discharged from the hospital and move on to the uh, move on to phase two, you're ready to resume a lot of homemaking tasks and advance your exercise program. Okay, now during this phase, patients will participate in OT maybe three times a week for approximately a month to two, and work hardening may be possible here depending on patient status and progress, but remember you want to avoid isometric training or anything that requires straining or holding your breath uh, because these increase oxygen demand. Okay, finally, moving on to phase three. This is the maintenance phase, which begins after the completion of phase two and involves a much less intense monitored exercise program. And so here, uh, patients will generally attend a session once a week uh, in community-based exercise program. Um, and if they aren't strong enough to tolerate outpatient therapy, they may continue treatment from home. And one thing to note here is, uh, what do we know about maintenance programs? It is not covered by Medicare, okay? So that was like just a very brief, uh, broad conceptualization of the three phases of cardiac rehab. And now I'm going to flip this over and we're going to go straight into each MET level and the activities you might select at each level. Now this is a much dreaded content area, but look how, look how fun this looks. I have all these images here to help you guys remember this and make it fun. Now as I go through each level, it's important that you try not to remember every activity because really there are thousands of activities that can be included at each level. So just understand why certain activities might be appropriate and safe because the goal should be to use this as a reference to help you determine the approximate level of energy required to perform certain tasks so that you can modify activities and ensure uh, the right amount of uh, energy needed to safely complete the task, okay? So this is really important for you to consider as you learn the MET levels. And even if you can't remember everything, having a broad understanding of energy costs and conservation principles will help you sort of fill in the blank uh, when your mind goes blank. <laughs> All right, so let's first start with the one to two box here. Now, you'll see that I started at 1.5 because if you'll remember what I said earlier, one is at rest. So that's when you're laying down quietly without doing anything. So in terms of activities, um, let's look at these images. We uh, have an image here at the top of a transfer because this is when we are still very low on energy and working on transfers, performing self-care activities while seated, right? So while st static standing is possible, it takes a lot more energy to stand than sit, so patients would be seated. So think of all the things you could do here while you're seated, desk work, sewing, knitting, etc. okay? Moving to two to three, now by the time patients get to met level two to three, they can take seated sponge bath or seated warm shower. And seated because standing takes more energy. And remember that heat or humidity will make the heart work harder, which will make breathing more difficult. And cool water or cold water will chill the uh, patient and require more energy, <laughs> which is why we start with warm bath, okay? Uh, there won't be any hot showers until you get to at least met level four. 
But what does happen at two to three that's important is dressing. So patients can dress and address themselves between levels two and three. And one thing to note, be mindful that upper extremity, ex extremity movements like raising the arm uh, takes more energy than lower extremity movements. So we'd wanna avoid a lot of overhead movements or positions that hold our upper extremities overhead for long periods of time. Uh, some activities you can do here include uh, light woodworking, dusting, washing the dishes, um, and you can play, uh, begin to play a lot of instruments here at this level, okay? All right, levels three to four. Uh, you can finally take a standing shower. So at level one, you are in, bed, in the bed resting, maybe using wet wipes to clean your face. And at two, you are seated at the sink or taking seated sponge bath. But by the time you get to three, you're standing to take a warm shower. And notice warm, we're not taking hot showers yet, but you are standing. Uh, by the time you're between three to four, you can do most household chores, like making the bed, sweeping, uh, mopping, doing some light gardening. So in terms of recreational activities, um, you're still taking it easy with things that don't require a lot of, a lot of exertion, but you could do, I don't know, fishing, sailing, archery, okay? So levels four to five. This marks the stage when you can finally have a hot standing shower. Okay, so by the time you can take a hot shower, you can also engage in activities like golf, carrying your own clubs, uh, while golfing, badminton, uh, table tennis, uh, tennis doubles, and you could go dancing and do some light carpentry. Okay, levels five uh, to six. Here at med level five, we get a nice break. It is sexy time. <laughs> All right, so one way to remember this is to remember that five, uh, level five starts with F and think of all the words that begin with F that's associated with sex or some sexual innuendo. Uh, fun, flirty, freaky, fetish, I don't know. It's getting rated R now, but whatever you can associate to remember this stage. Let's just say that by the time you can have sex, uh, you should be able to make your own bed, change the linens, and wash the dishes, unless of course there are other factors not addressed here, okay? Now, that was a lot, but here's another way you can break down the information from 1.5 to 6, okay? Now, uh, you'll see that I have color-coded some of these activities. In red, you can make a narrative of how you lead up to sex. So first, here, you gotta know how to dress and get undressed, right? Then you learn to make your own bed from three to four, and from four to five, you're changing your linens to something sexy, velvety, and at five to six, you are putting those linens to good use. <laughs> Okay, now um, let's look at the blue line. At two to three, you're merely dusting, which you can do sitting down and it barely takes any energy to swift dust off your, off your desk. But at three to four, you're moving off from dusting to sweeping and mopping the floor. And at four to five, you're raking the leaves and weeding. Then at five to six, you're shoveling and digging. See how easy that is? It makes sense, doesn't it? So remember that and try to fill in the blanks when you can recall examples of activities at each stage. Okay, moving on. Uh, six to seven. Yeah, I'm going to uh, talk about 6 to 10 sort of broadly together. So from 6 to 7, you're walking briskly about 5 miles per hour. And have you guys ever tried this on the treadmill? It's pretty fast. Uh, so by the time you're at MET level 6 to 7, you can do breaststrokes, you can go ski, maybe even play basketball. And from 7 to 8, you're jogging, uh, but still keeping it at about 5 miles per hour and gradually moving to 5.5 five miles per hour at levels eight to nine, which would be considered running. Then when you get to 10 
and plus you're pretty much running quickly fast and even may be able to participate in recreational activities uh, competitively okay so that's it for MET level. See, it's not hard. I think all of us kind of freak out when we talk about the MET levels and it seems like this mysterious concept and we have trouble remembering the activities, but it's important to understand why certain activities might fit at each stage. And before you try to break it down from one to two to two to three, understand what acute cardiac rehab looks like, what the uh, outpatient rehab uh, might look like, and then fill in the blanks after. It'll make it a lot easier for everything that you study if you can break it down conceptually and really understand what it is you're trying to do as you guide your patients through assessments and intervention. All right, have a great rest of the week, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.